This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. This is yet another video on my ADS-1256 data acquisition module journey. This time I will show you another cool improvement which was suggested by one of my followers on Instagram. The top side of the board stayed unchanged, however this time I chose a red PCB. Very vivid colors and a great contrast with the white silk screen. The more interesting thing is on the bottom side of the PCB. As you can see there is a large row of solder tabs with a text saying GPIO close to the USB. So the thing is that I replaced the previous connectors and cables with a new flex PCB based solution. Due to this change I replaced the JST connectors at the bottom of the main PCB. I slightly redesigned the front panel so it can accept the flex PCB cable. And of course I designed a custom flex PCB to connect the two panels. Before you would ask why, it is because I could not find such a short cable off the shelf. And as you can see, the flex PCB is really flexible. It runs 28 traces and it is roughly 15 by 15 millimeters. It was relatively easy to design it. I just made a custom footprint for the 28 tabs, connected them, drew the outline, added a hedged copper pore on the bottom side, and then added the stiffener areas. Then as usual, I placed an order at the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. If you want to get your own flexible PCB or any custom PCB design manufactured, PCBWay is a great partner in that. And in addition to their PCB related services, they also offer 3D printing and CNC machining. So they have everything for your DIY projects. Visit their website and use their services for your project. So after assembling the PCB's SMD parts and reflowing the board, let's test it. I cannot really afford frying these components because they are quite expensive, so I want to make sure that there are no short circuit or anything destructive flows on the board. First I hooked up an adjustable power supply in series with my multimeter that I set to current measuring mode, and the ground is directly connected between the power supply and the board. The 5V rail first goes through the multimeter and then it ends up in the probe that I attach to the input of the 3.3 volt load dropout regulator. The board shows roughly 50 milliamps current consumption, which is a good sign. The board does not have any shorts, at least not those which could toast the components. So this brings me to the next step, where I am brave enough to connect the board to power via USB. To be sure, I use the USB tester. It reports similar currents as the multimeter, so that's very nice. And now, as the multimeter is available again, I can poke around the board's test points to see if everything is OK. I did not add test points to the large 5 to 3.3 volt regulator, because it is easy to probe its pins. However, I added a test point to the ADS-1256 3.3 volt regulator and to the output of the voltage reference. As a convenience, I also added a tab for the ground as well. So now the testing is done. I have now three high performance deck modules, but they are not at their peak potential yet because I need to add the GPIO connector and the front panel to it. You can now see how this nice 28 pin FPC connector sits at its place nicely. Due to its low height, it will fit my metal enclosure perfectly. And then of course, the front panel also needs a 28 pin connector that receives the flex cable. So let's assemble them.
So at this point it would be fair to compare the previous version with this one, just so I can show you that it is worth investing in the Flex PCB solution. The first most obvious thing is that we got a more clear front panel. There are no more ugly solder joints. Also it is worth noticing that it is quite a meticulous job to solder all those 28 tiny wires without shorting them. I don't really know what was on my mind when I came up with this idea. Then let's reveal the PCBs. I tried to drag them out simultaneously for a more dramatic effect, but you can see what is happening there. When looking at the flex PCB, it is hard to believe that all that massive wiring can be squeezed into such a small and neat area. I really like it. Also from a closer perspective, the difference is more striking perhaps. The new connector takes up roughly half of the area of the previous connector, but uh, this is relatively expected as the new connector has a 0.5 mm pitch instead of the previous 1 mm. Then finally from a side view, the flex PCB based connector slides in very easily and everything fits neatly. This is what we expect. And actually the previous connectors are also quite good when it comes to fitting. Uh, the problem is the cables, they take up a lot of space. Then they have to be crimped with the proper JST terminal and they have to be soldered as well. So I just want to emphasize again that it is very tedious work to use these connectors with the JST terminals. So now you can see why I took the effort to slightly redesign the PCBs. With this new front panel and the main panel we have a much more clear layout and this also makes the wall assembly experience much better. So that's all for now until I come up with another set of improvements for this device. And once again I want to thank my follower for this suggestion. It was really a good idea to replace that messy cable with this uh, flex PCB solution. So if anyone else have more improvement ideas please let me know. And if you like this kind of content please consider joining my YouTube membership. It can help me to develop these kind of projects and uh, make them into a better product. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.